Hello everyone and welcome to this week's scripting quick tip tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use automation to generate scripts uh, for whatever program you wish. In this case, we're going to be making a simple automated After Effects script, which will generate some compositions for us, however many we choose. And I'm basically going to be showing you how, and I'm basically going to be illustrating how you can take simple strings and commands and chain them using loops and basically be able to create any script you want to easily automate things. This could be useful for batch creation of random elements, exporting things, creating random effects, and a whole bunch of other things. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out this code in GitHub, try it out for yourself, make a fork of it and modify it however you want. And also don't forget to follow us there on GitHub for coding updates. I always upload code way before on GitHub than the videos themselves. Also, you can follow us in the description as well on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, come join and join the scripting extensions, plugins, expressions, tutorial ideas, and many other channels we have going. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP and get cool perks as well as member status inside of our Discord. Shout out to our, all of our members. So this script we're going to be making today is going to generate a script itself. And this script itself is going to, as you can see, once we open it up, contain some very simple commands. As you can see, we simply looped through some stuff, uh, creating the composition, a layer within that composition, and then opening that composition in the viewer. Basically a starting point to get you to automate creation of scripts and writing code inside of code, which is pretty meta. So I'm going to create a new script file and show you how you can do this yourself. We're going to start by creating a variable called script, or we can even call it script file to be more descriptive. This is going to be a file we generate on our computer. We can basically generate any file type we want. We can generate a text file. We can generate a JSX file, or you can use some kind of custom file extension for cre your creation of a file. But in our case, we're going to keep it simple and create a file object, and we're going to use a JSX file because we want to run it just like a normal script, uh, in this case inside of After Effects. This applies for any other program you can run scripts in, just to keep that in mind. So I'm going to add the path which I want to save this to. I'm just going to send it to my desktop and call it my script.jsx. And as you can see on my desktop, I already have that. So I'll just delete it from the previous example. So by default now, this script does not exist. We just need to make reference to it and fill it up with information if we ever want to actually create or generate it. So because in this simple example, we're going to be generating a bunch of compositions, I'm going to create a variable for the number of compositions I want to create. In this case, I'll just say five to keep it simple. Um, and then we need to have sort of a global string we're going to contain all of the code of our document in. If you look at the script I have right now, we have five lines of code, and this can be basically converted into a string a type variable, which we can then use to put into the file and act just like script code. So I'm going to say string, or you can be more descriptive and say code string is equal to an empty string. And now we want to loop through the number of compositions we want to make. Uh, we have this set to five, and we're just going to say var i is equal to 1. For i is less than or equal to our num comps increment i by 1. Now this is going to go through however many num comps we give it. And we want to create these compositions. Now normally to create a composition in After Effects, you would need to say uh, app.project.items.addComp. And then you want to put in all the information like the name, the size, uh, the pixel aspect ratio, the duration, and the frame rates. And this will basically generate a composition for you. As you can see in this case, I generated uh, five compositions with the name name. But we want to actually use this, not just run the command, we want to store the command as text in a file. And to make things a little bit more controllable, uh, we can say comp is equal to that. So it returns a comp object. And let's call it comp plus i. I'll just make sure that's a string. And what we can actually do is really just test this with regular code before we convert it to a string. So if I test this now, you can see I'm going to get comp1, comp2, comp3, etc. So let's finish off what code we want to add. I want to add a layer to each one of these comps. So I'll say var layer is equal to comp dot layers dot add solid. And we're just going to add a simple solid. We'll make it white 
call it solid. And I'll give it the dimensions, pixel aspect ratio, and duration, which we can just say comp.duration. And I'm not actually sure that code is right. Let's try it out. Actually, before we do, let's say comp.open in viewer. And this will allow us to open it up successfully, hopefully. And yes, we have successfully opened up our five compositions, solids created, proper duration and size. Now we can basically convert all of this actual code into strings. So what I'm going to do is encapsulate everything in single quotes. I'll take this line and encapsulate it in single quotes. Take this line, single quotes. This line, single quotes. And now we want to write this to our script file however many times. And what I'm also going to do is uh, add in a new line. So that way we have our first comp chunk of code, new line, second comp chunk of code, etc. Now, the way we're now going to do this is to grab our code string, and say plus equals this code. And we also need to end this in a semicolon. And we're going to do the same thing with each of these lines here code string plus equals, code string plus equals. You could theoretically put this all in one line of code, but it would be a little bit less organized that way. So now if we were to run this script, nothing should happen. Correct, nothing happened. Let's go ahead and alert at the end our code string. It's gonna give us something empty here. And it's because I spelt code string wrong, it needs to be code string. Now, you can see we have a bit bunched up looking data. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we write it to our script.jsx file. So to do that, we're going to grab our script file and open it up. We're gonna open it with the write property in mind because we want to write some data to it. So I'll say script file.write. And what's all the data we're gonna to write to it? Simply our code string. Then we need to also close the file so that we can have access to it in other programs and uh, delete it if needed. So now let's go ahead and run it. And we should now have a script file on our desktop. If we open it up, you can now see we have some text, but it's not very nicely formatted. Everything is one line after the other. But if I was to run this, it's going to run the processes correctly. There are a couple of issues here. We have all comp sixes, which is not correct. And these all need a new line. So I'm going to add this uh, after each line of code. I'm going to add, actually I don't need to add it like with a plus. I can just add it right there. And we'll add a line break so that it's a bit more organized after each line of code. And if we want to actually use our variable i from this code creation, we need to break out and then add it like that. So now, even though we already have a script file created, if we go ahead and run the script again, it's gonna overwrite everything because we're simply writing to the whole file. We're not writing anything or appending. Now, if I run this, we can go ahead and navigate to our script and open it up again. Now you can see it's looking a lot more organized. Uh, in this case, we're getting a strange result right here but it might still work to run this. Yep, now we're still gonna get comp one, comp two, comp three, comp four, and comp five. Uh, I basically, it looks a little bit misorganized to have it like this, but uh, this will work as well because JavaScript, you can add strings and integers and it sort of figures it out in this case. There's one more step you could go the extra mile to do. If you don't want to just create a, a script file or in some other file, you can also run the file immediately afterwards to see how it's working. So I can say, uh, global eval file and then we're going to evaluate our script file this will basically run it like a normal script and as you can see we have run it successfully so this will allow you to easily like make changes uh, we can delete this make some changes whatever we want it to be maybe we want uh, black solids instead and we run this and now we're going to get the updated script generated and running immediately with our updated code but that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this in the GitHub link. Follow us there as I post code uh, way before any of the videos come out. And in the description, follow us on Instagram for other updates. You can also join our Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. 
and you can become a channel member, link in the description, and you can get cool perks as well as help support us. Thanks again for watching, we'll see you guys next time.